So um, you made this pressing with this potter die and it's um, this little blank crest. Um, I would go so far as to say there was probably a second die that had multiple uh, crest designs on it. Having a blank one would have been odd or it was for engraving. Actually, that's probably the more likely case. This was for engraving and it could have been a locket or whatever. Um, but anyway, so you did some pressings and you know you did this chasing on it and did some enhancements which are great um, and you tried to do these stars which that was the thing you had a tough time with. So they're asymmetrical and a little bit mushy. So um, I wanted to show you some basic layout uh, techniques. So this is a layout technique for sheet metal. It's not just for jewelry. It's for laying out marks on sheet metal for any reason, for bending, you know, galvanized steel for duct work or, or anything. Um, and there's a product called Layout Blue. Um, it's blue, translucent blue spray paint kind of and it allows you to scribe and see your marks on it. So you can use Sharpie to do that. This is just black Sharpie. Um, put it in this camera. See if it... And when you scribe, scribe lines on it, you, it, make, they makes, it makes them you know, much more apparent. Um, they use layout blue for all kinds of things. So you know, if you're going to cut giant piece of sheet metal, you need to mark it out. Uh, for special angles or bending or whatever, you would, you know, cover it with layout blue. That's just a, a thing used in industry. So I colored this with Sharpie. It's you know, just the metal that you have your pressing on. So you would just color it in. Use a fat Sharpie because that makes more sense. I just have a skinny one in my hand. And whatever it is you're going to lay out, you can use a ruler if you need a straight edge or whatever. But the, the point is that your scribe line doesn't have to be super deep but it'll be really bright and there'll be good contrast and you'll be able to see it well. Let's see if I can see it in the camera here. Right? Um, you can then, you can do that on a piece that's already in the pitch and chase, you know, chase right on it. So in the case of these little stars, here's the little stars. You wanna get them just right. Um, if you have layout, ink on them on your metal you have plenty of time to figure out the layout so if you do the layout and it doesn't look good you just color over it again so if I draw a star you know whatever however the star is supposed to be use dividers get the spacing exactly right between all six points um, sorry five points well if you're doing a star of David it's six points but so that I just did freehand but you would use dividers do you know what I mean like use dividers and do the geometry and put you know put magnifiers on so that you can really see close and get your layout perfect mm -hmm. right and then you know choose very tiny um, really fine um, crisp line chasing tools to then punch those lines in so that you end up with stars that you know it comes out right on target you just chase right through that blue or black. do you do you work from the back after you get the front done to poke it? In those lines, because that's what I did on Wait, these. Wait, say that again. You mean okay, to so once I question? Put, once I put the marks on there, right? Well, let's say it's here. Okay. Then, so you have this laid out, right? And well, then look, I went. I, made, I went in the back. I made a panta, panta, What is it called? A pantogram by accident. I don't want to offend anybody. So but I went from the back, and then I tried to poke out the star. Oh yeah. Well, you can do that if you want. Oh, okay. okay. Um, yeah, you sure you can do that if you want. Um, but the the important thing is to do your layout. Your layout has to happen first. So, you know, let's say you, I would color this whole shield, this whole little shield area with a fat sharpie, not a skinny sharpie. Which that's the one we grabbed. You know, color the whole thing. Get it all colored in. If you have layout blue spray and you want to use that, you can. But there's no reason to get that all over this whole thing. That comes off pretty easy with a light solvent. Sharpie comes off with rubbing alcohol. If for those of you that didn't know it. So I would get dividers. Fingernail polish remover works really good with Sharpie. Rubbing alcohol. Rubbing alcohol yes. too? Some of the colors don't uh, come off a little, with a little more difficulty than others. I, don't, I can't find my small dividers, so I'm just gonna get my big dividers. All right, so 
These are gigantic, ridiculous. Okay, so, so I'm gonna, dividers. So I'm what do you do is here. you're gonna find your center point on something like this. Find your center point, however you want to do it. I just happen to have dividers mainly for the video, so you can see. So it's that wide. So do your measurements however you want to do your measurements. Find your center point, mark it with the Sharpie. So let's say the center point is there. Um, let me grab a straight edge. Put that ruler right there up on the riser right here. So the, you have a point there, so that's a natural center. So I found center there, have this there. Always take time to do a layout. You don't have to scribe this in real deep and scratch your metal. You don't, you don't have to do that. You have a, it's a whole geometric thing here, you know. You see that? It's geometric. So you have a center point, center point, center point. You have to lay it out so it's not cockeyed, right? And let's say you want this to be a certain height from here. You know, figure out that distance, mark it. Figure out the distance of that, mark it, and then if you're going to do it freehand, draw one side first. Let's say we draw this side first. I'm going to show the camera in a second. So I did one side. I don't know if you guys can see this. I laid out one side of the, there's like a chevron in the middle of that. You see that? And yep. and then you can measure the distance with, use tiny dividers, measure the distance from that corner to this corner, right? And put it here, right? And okay. Make a little dot. So I'm just freehanding it because I don't want to take forever. And then you take your ruler and connect that, right? And then measure, you know, let's say from here to here or however you want to measure it. So you have a little point here and then you can connect that. We'll put a ruler on it, connect that. There you have that laid out. It's nice and symmetrical, and you can see it well. And it would already be in your pitch bowl, like this guy. Okay. You, you're following? Oh, yeah, I totally did. Right? Totally see, it. like, spend some time getting it right. You don't just sort of go willy nilly. You have to, if you have a pattern, like, especially with a geometric pattern. I know mm -hmm. this. They, right. This came out awful. So now you want to, well, there are, you know, exploratory things. So then, you know, if you find, figure you want to know where the center of these of these stars is so you would choose like the top and then right there where the you know it's like a crotch so you would pick like that and that as your center point of the design you know, there where is it there and there so you know you have then you have a center point there so you would mark where it is here and you draw a line down and then you draw a line through the center and do the same thing on the other side are you following yep so let's say there's the center point of the star on this side. You know, I'm measure and then make the same place on the other side. So now I have the center point here, and then you're going to measure the height and have a center point here and here. Now you know where everything's going to be placed. Do you see that? Yeah. So the other thing you can do is work this out on paper. Uh huh. It's a little less precise, but you can work this out on paper if you cut this out exactly out of paper, uh -huh. because it's only a soft curve and you can it'll conform and then you can glue the paper down. Okay. Now you might end up off center if you do that because it's paper, but mm -hmm. it's possible. The other way to do this um, for chasing is to put uh, china white on this, uh -huh. but Sharpie doesn't rub off and okay. it's dark and it's, it's a, a better tool for the job. So then take dividers and divide up the, the space between the star points, and you can work out the geometry on your star um, yourself. You know, I'm just gonna freehand this so that we're not here for 100 years. And you would have this, that's terrible, wow. You get it so that you have a perfect, geometrically as perfect as you can get it, stars that and you'll have something to go by when you chase you're not just trying to so these stars are lousy but the idea is to put them there like that anybody can see that at all right and so then you have your design laid out geometrically and so at least it'll be placed right 
And if they're earrings, then they'll, they'll match, which is what well, I was aiming Well, that at. is less of a concern because they're going to be this far apart. That's true. You know. Okay. So that's it.